Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to the Sims 4 speedboarding video or welcome to the channel if you are new here. So in today's video I'm going to be building in the world of Willow Creek which is one of the base game worlds and I'm going to be building three homes, so three separate units on one lot. So first things first, Happy New Year. This is officially my first upload of 2024 and so I just wanted to basically just take a second just wish you a lovely new year. I hope 2024 has been treating you well so far. I'm very much aware that the fact that we're almost two weeks in to this new year and I'm only now just wishing you new year and that is only because last week, in case you didn't see my community post, I unfortunately catched quite a nasty cold and to be honest with you, it's still hanging about like I just cannot shake this cold it is just it is persistent and it will not leave and so if you can notice any any sound difference in my voice that is what that is you best believe I am drinking hot milk and honey like there is no tomorrow I am down in it but my voice just seems a little bit a little bit raspy so apologies for that if you can notice it but this week I'm very much still on the Sims 4 for rent train and by that I mean I am just still so excited for the fact that we can build multiple different houses on one lot with the new for rent feature and so I basically just want to sit down and build three homes on one lot. I haven't done this yet so far I've built a city block kind of like apartment complex with four apartments I then built some New York brownstone townhouses my last upload was some British semi-detached houses but one thing that I really wanted to do was basically build multiple different family homes just in one lot and so yeah that is basically what I did and so I really hope you guys like it but anyway getting on and talking a little bit more about the build itself so the lot that I'm building on is a 30 by 20 and I'm building in the neighborhood of Willow Creek which I think it's technically called Foundry Cove I always refer to it as a starter neighborhood because when you enter a brand new safe file there is a few different starter homes in this neighborhood and to be honest whenever I play the game myself I always just start off in this place because even though we've got so many different beautiful worlds and beautiful neighborhoods that your sims could live in I always just resort back to this little starting neighborhood just because I don't know I think it's the nostalgia but I'm building on the empty 30 by 20 slot when you enter a brand new safe file and like I said there ends up being at three houses all decorated differently all decorated for almost like different families and different storylines so for the first house which you can see that I have already quickly whipped up and I've basically just pushed it to the side but that house ends up being on the exterior green for all of the different houses like I said there's three in total but on the exterior I did them in different color schemes just because I don't know, I just thought it looked really nice. It, do, it doesn't relate to the inside. Like, the inside of the greenhouse, it isn't overly green. It was just the exterior sliding. But for the inside of the greenhouse, I decided to decorate it to be for a set of parents with their kid. I was thinking that one of the parents was in, like, the mechanical kind of career. So maybe, like, they're a mechanic or something. And then the other parent, I was really liking the idea that they could be a nurse. Now, I'm not saying a nurse that aspires to be a doctor, you know, just like a, a nurse that helps treat patients at a hospital. I was thinking that they would be in that career and so yeah that is the first house it has two bedrooms and two bathrooms but then the middle house which you can see that I've started furnishing this ends up having one bedroom but two bathrooms but there is an extra two bonus rooms in the basement because as you can see this house ends up having a sunken driveway and also a sunken basically underground bit. Now the idea that I've got for the sim that lives in this middle house, which this one ends up being brown, it's the same sliding by the way that I use for all the different houses but I just changed the colour of them, but for this idea for the sim that lives in the middle house, I'm not gonna lie, it's probably my favourite storyline out of all three of them and that is because the idea that I have for this sim is, is a single bloke, he's probably in like his mid, mid 40s, maybe late 40s actually, and he used to live here with his mum. Now sadly his mum passed away and and he was left this house in the will. I was personally picturing this bloke never moved out. He always just lived with his mum. I was thinking he's probably a little bit of an introvert and so he probably doesn't have that many friends and his mum was probably his best friend but sadly she passed away and so he now lives here by himself and this sim that lives in this middle house is a massive collector. So every single like collectible, every single model, every single sculpture, I basically try to place down on the inside of this house. And it's a little bit of a juxtaposition because on the inside, where I was imagining that it was his mum's house, the decoration is quite old fashioned. It looks like it's a little bit dated. So like the furniture, the wallpaper, some of the decorations, but then you've just got all of these different models and all of these different stuff basically that he's collected over time, just scattered around the house and it's just, it was really fun to decorate this middle one. I mean, saying that, 
all of them were really fun to decorate but for this middle one I just went to town through the debug menu, through the decorations menu and just basically tried to put out every single decoration, every single collectible that I could think of. Now if you're wondering, the way that I did the sunken drive, it probably looks a lot more difficult than what it actually is but I promise you it's actually pretty simple once you get the hang of it. Basically what I did is I initially built a rectangular room on the floor, it doesn't have to be any certain shape or size, I just built like a, a standard garage size rectangle basically and then you know sometimes if you want to move a, a house up onto a foundation you put it up well basically if you use that same mechanic that same little toggle you can pull a room down into the ground which is what I started off by doing now when I did that there seemed to be some sort of like dip going where the terrain would meet the wall once it's dipped down you can kind of see over here I'm trying to cover it up with using some live edit walls but that is completely normal that will happen it's just part of the process don't worry, we cover up these like glitchy terrain bits. But basically, once you build the initial wall, which you want to be the basement, you can then go ahead and build the rest of the house on the upper levels. I just came in, I built the rest of the house, I did the roofing, and then I did the wallpapering. And that's when I then decided to basically figure out how I wanted the front driveway to work. Now, to do the sunken driveway in the way that I've done it, there is two different options. The first option, which... I wouldn't recommend if I'm being honest with you because it just gives you so much more work and it's just so long winded but you can just use the terrain manipulation tool and basically ever so slightly make it so it's almost like a slope and then you know smooth it out so it's nice and smooth that is the first option but the second option which is the option that I did and the option that I think is just 10 times easier and honestly will save you about an hour's time is basically I used a roof piece to disguise the terrain underneath it that way it was completely flat and I was able to change the roof pattern to be at some sort of like concrete looking tarmac kind of driveway now i did a few steps before i added in the roof piece and it's only a couple so it's not like too long winded but basically what i did before i added in that roof piece to kind of cover up the terrain i went in and i added some tiles directly in front of where i wanted the future garage door to be because you can see at the minute I've already added the garage door in front of like that slopey driveway but I knew that I wanted the terrain in that area to be flat because when you're working with terrain tools I don't know if many people know this but if ever you want to lock a certain terrain to a certain height you want something to be in this particular place and you almost want to lock the terrain so it won't move a really good tip is to use the roof not the roof, <laughs> the floor tiles, because once you place down at floor tiles, you can't really manipulate the, the the terrain underneath it. It's kind of like locked in place. So I placed down at some floor tiles in front of where I placed down that garage door. And then at the end of the lock, kind of like at the edge, I then placed down at some more. Think of it as kind of like a starting point for where I want the, the terrain to start to dip and the ending point for where I want it to stop dipping, if, if you're following my drift. And then once I did that, I then popped in the roof piece, like I said, changed the colour of the roof, so it was some sort of like driveway looking tarmac. And then ever so slightly, there was a little bit of hill popping in through the roof, but I was able just to go back in with the terrain manipulation tool use the one that's the downward arrow and basically just push the dirt back into the floor and then where the where the roof piece was just like a single item it was completely covering up any bumpy lumps any like terrain glitching through and then yeah that is how you pretty much create a sunken driveway like i said it probably looks a lot more difficult and a lot more fiddly than what it actually is i reckon the the, the bit that's probably the most difficult to do is just trying to cover up where the terrain kind of like dips down where you've pushed down a room into the basement but what i decided to do was cover it up on one side using a live edit wall i'm not sure what pack the wall is from it might be cottage Divin or potentially discover university but i basically just sized down a live edit wall and then moved it so it was kind of running alongside the basement wall and then i sized down some bushes really small on that side and then on the opposite side of the house where it still was dipping down i then just used the same bush and then basically just covered it up basically just masked it and like disguised the the dip and then yeah that is pretty much how how i did it but Anyway, moving on, as you can see, I then just built the third and final house, which is on the right hand side, and that one ends up being a mixture of grey sliding and then sort of like a brick on the bottom. So this house ends up having two bedrooms and two bathrooms, and to be completely honest with you, 
when I came in and I started off building this whole entire lot, I had the intention, the intention was there, I was basically going to partly furnish this last house and leave it so it was almost moving ready. Now, what I mean by that is I was going to furnish it so your sims still have a toilet, they still have a bathtub, they still have like a, a fridge and an oven and stuff. Things that you can't really just like pick up and put into a moving box and then, you know, move house. I was going to do it that way, but when I was furnishing the other houses, I just got this idea of, or oh, why don't I make it? So a couple has newly moved into that house himself. So it's not completely fully fleshed out furnished. You know, it hasn't got every single realistic touch known to man, but it's still somewhat furnished. Basically the idea that I then started to run along with when I was decorating that house was maybe this couple has just got their first mortgage on their first ever house. They've recently moved out of like an apartment in say Stan Marchuno or maybe every Green Harbor or something. They've got their mortgage, they've moved into this little house, they've got an infant, and so that is how I decorated one of the bedrooms. There is an infant's nursery and then also the parents' bedroom. But I was thinking they probably moved in maybe like six weeks ago or something. They've pretty much unpacked their whole entire kitchen, so all their kitcheny bobs are out because I feel like if you was to move into a new place, one of the first places that you would make sure has everything is your kitchen and then your bathroom and then your bedroom and then you kind of go out through all the different rooms in the house that way and so yeah the kitchen is pretty much all done but then in terms of like the lounge room and like the hallway spaces I placed down like little wall decals onto the wall sized them down really small and I was thinking they were nails in the wall and then by these little marks that I placed down I then moved objects painting which I was imagining maybe the family are yet to put up these paintings you know maybe Maybe they moved in, they had to get back to work and they'd yet to find the time to sit down and go throughout all their stuff and make the final touches to their houses and so yeah I placed down at some paintings next like little wall decals that I imagine would be little holes in the walls and stuff like that. I thought it was a really fun idea but let me know if you want me in future to partly furnish some of these residential rental lots to be you know some completely furnished and then maybe leave one or two empty because with this new residential rental lot type which i feel like this is quite important by the way to mention here i didn't actually build this to be a residential rental like that is not the official lot type when i was building it these set of houses only because there seems to be a bit of a glitch whenever you download a residential rental off the gallery once you download it I think it's fine, but actually downloading that lot type from the gallery seems to make people's games crash and I don't want to make your grain crash. And so whenever I've been building a residential rentals, I've just been building them as normal residentials. And then the idea I've got is you can download it. And then once you've got it in your game, you can then switch it out to be one. But yeah, I just don't know what to do going forward. If ever I do build, I say if ever I do, I'd most definitely will be building. But if, when I build future residential rentals where I intend to have multiple different residential areas or multiple different houses in one lot, if you prefer, if I just decorate all of them, if I decorate some of them, them if I don't decorate them at all like I just want to know what your opinions and your preferences is on it and so yeah please do let me know but either way moving on getting back and actually talking about what I'm doing right now so as you can see I finished up pretty much all the different shells of all the individual houses I basically just wanted to come in get all the spacings right get all of the different dimensions for all the different houses and kind of like their back garden space and then it go in and then kind of like landscape and decorate around that for each of the houses at the front of the lot I made it so they've all got their own little individual parking space for their little cars I know that we don't have drivable cars in the sims 4 it's still something that i'm holding out for i know a lot of people don't agree with it but it's just something that will make me so happy if you even if we could have a car and you could click on it and you could just click travel you don't even have to go it doesn't even have to be an animation just so it's a little bit more usable because if you're familiar with my channel you probably know this by now but i often have cars in driveways because i like to build realistic things in this game and to me to have a driveway to have a car is quite realistic and a lot of people do have it and so i would love if we could just have some sort of feature where the car is tied to like the traveling feature in the game or something but either way each one of the houses has their own little driveway i placed down two cars onto the actual lot itself and then you might have noticed at the front of the house for the house that is on the left hand side so the green one I actually moved objects a car off a lot and kind of 
in the road outside of it. Now, unfortunately, that car won't travel through to the gallery because I basically just moved it into the neighborhood itself. If you've got the tool mod by Twisted Mexi, you can just do the same thing. You can get a car and you can move objects here in front of the house. It doesn't apply to this house. It applies to every single neighborhood, every single lot in the game. You can basically take objects off the lot. That is literally what the tool mod stands for. It's literally take objects off lot. That is what tool stands for. But I feel like me mostly, I rarely even use that feature. I mainly just use it so I can play about with all the different things, you know, manipulate objects and size them down and size them up and rotate them and stuff. But I basically wanted there to be a basketball hoop in the front driveway on the greenhouse, but I didn't want to place down the basketball hoop and then place down a car in front of it because then it's not usable and it's kind of like a waste of space. And so I thought, well, if I move objects a car outside of the house, I've got the idea in my hat in my head that that is their car, but they've just moved it off the drive into the street. So then the kid in this house can then play basketball of an evening. And so, yeah, that is what I did for that one. The middle one that's got the sunken drive, as you might have seen, I then moved objects a car, but I rotated it, I think like 30 degrees or something, basically, so it was sitting flush, so then it was sitting on the sunken driveway, or as we know it, as the little roof piece that I made look like a driveway. And then for the final one, I just plonked down a normal car in front of it. I tried to play around the terrain to make it seem like the tires of the car has kind of made the grass a little bit more muddy and you know there is some like dirt and some sort of like stony path in some areas i just tried to make it seem realistic but yeah that is the front portion of the house i then went in and placed down some grass and at the back of it i placed down some telephone poles initially i was going to place down the telephone poles at the very front of the house just because i just thought they looked really cool but i was going to place down the telephone poles and then connect them with different wires but then i didn't want it to be blocking the front view of the house and so i decided to opt for them in the back garden so it kind of runs up along one side of the lot and then it going throughout the back of the lot i placed down a couple of different telephone poles the ones that I've used, I believe, are from the Snowy Escape live edit menu. Because for some reason, we've got a, we've got a number of different telephone poles in the game. But the one that I've used is from Snowy Escape. And then there are some wires that you can find if you've got the Journey to Batu game pack, the Star Wars pack. Basically, we've got some telephone wires, and so I basically just moved objects them, and then ever so slightly just adjusted them so then they were looking like they were connecting each pole between each other. If you get what I mean. But yeah, that was kind of like the exterior landscape and the exterior decorations. I tried to keep it quite minimal, but now as you can see, I've now moved on and I've started furnishing all of the individual back gardens. So I'm currently just coming in and finishing up the middle house's back garden. This one ends up having Honestly, just loads of different random objects. I didn't really know what kind of things this sim, the, the bloke that's in his mid 40s would have in his back garden. So I basically just placed down a ton of different random items. We have the archeology span table that we got from the Jungle Adventure game pack. He might dabble in going to Selva Drada every once in a while. I don't know, so I placed that down. Also placed down the Dew Collector that we got from the Eco Lifestyle expansion pack. I then also placed down some sort of little barbecuing station, but it looks like it used to be a bin or some sort of barrel or something. I placed that down as well. But in the front garden that you saw me do, it was probably the most decorated garden. In there, I placed down like a little telescope. I placed down a washing line. I do also revisit that back garden when I actually move on and I start furnishing the greenhouse because I've realized that in the inside of the greenhouse, I didn't place down a washing machine and a tumble dryer, but I placed down a washing line on the outside and I didn't want your Sims to have random clothes piles everywhere. And so I do end up placing down a little wash tub in the greenhouse's back garden. But yeah, you know, I placed down like a barbecue area, a telescope, like I said. And then for the last garden that you just saw me do, I made it quite simple. It's quite basic. Like I said, I imagine the Sims have recently moved in. And so I placed down a little seating area. I say seating area. It's literally just a table with a couple of chairs, but then and also a few different planters and then also the hanging washing line that we got from the laundry day stuff pack in the inside of that house they do end up having a washing machine and a tumble dryer and so i didn't need to add in a wash tub but yeah that was the back garden spaces but now as you can see i've now moved on into the inside of the first house and i'm starting off with the house is on the left hand side which is the green one so this is the house that i decorated to be for a smaller family of three so i was thinking 
a set of parents live here one of them is a nurse one of them is a mechanic and they live here with their son now i was thinking that the son in this house really likes space and so that is why there is a telescope in the back garden i was thinking that that's his telescope and then in his bedroom as well i decorated it to be somewhat space themed i didn't want to go over the top because i feel like a lot of the time when you're doing kids rooms in the sims 4 it's very easy to pick one theme and just run with it and just make everything centered around that theme i didn't want to do that for this house i wanted it to be yeah he likes space but he's not over the top like in love with space he hasn't got space everywhere in his bedroom and so that was the idea that i have for this family in terms of the interior decoration for this one i just tried to make it seem somewhat generic like i don't have any decorations that tie to any particular careers there's no like weird looking plaque that references a particular hobby or anything like that i just tried to decorate it to be somewhat generic happy family home it is very small in here I will, but then saying that all of the houses are quite small. You've got to bear with me because I'm building three separate houses, but only on a 30 by 20 lot. The middle house is most definitely the biggest one, but that's only because the middle house ends up having three different levels, whereas the other two on either side of that one only have the normal two levels in the house, but they are quite small all the different individual houses but i kind of like it it's kind of like snuggly it's like really like cozy and cute but either way for this house i just tried to make it feel really warm and really welcoming and just like a homey home if you get what i mean like there's not perfectly matching decorations not everything is matchy matchy it's just loads of different furniture pieces loads of different like little knickknacks that they've all accumulated over time and they're just like random bits and bobs basically just scattered everywhere in this house and i just really like it so in the lounge room as you can see i decided to use these sofas which is from the book nook kit or the love seat is from the book nook kit as well as the armchair that is actually something that i've really struggled with when it came round to decorating this lounge room i just realized that we don't really have that many love seats in the game and the ones that we do have are quite stylized to be either for teenagers or they're like benches for outside seating areas and so i was i was struggling a little bit but thankfully the book nook kit came through i absolutely love the book nook kit it's probably my favorite kit that we got for the sims 4 running up alongside the industrial loft kit but yeah i placed down that sofa and armchair i then placed down a book nook kit bookcase and then cluttered that up with loads of random bits and bobs i placed down like an old photo frame in it i placed down some sort of like little puzzles box and then i moved objects and binoculars inside of it placed down some like little sculptures little knickknacks and then also in the same lounge room space also ends up being the dining room because again this house is very small and so i placed down a table in the corner the one that i've used is from the launch day stuff pack and then i placed down at some cats and dogs chairs around it not all the way around because i didn't want it to be taking up too much space in that room and so i placed down four chairs around the table and then in the corner where i imagine sims weren't able to access that easily i placed down some like cluttered decorations which i imagine they're probably things that need to go in the loft and the sims just haven't found the time to get out the ladder and go in the loft of this house and so they've basically just placed down some random books and like a random box on the side of the dining room table that you don't easily have access to and it's kind of like disguised and so i hid that in the corner but now as you can see i have moved over into the kitchen so in here i went for the counters that we got from the four rent expansion pack and then i decided to pair it with a fridge that we got from the cottage living dlc and then an oven that we got from the growing together expansion pack they don't typically go together i feel like but i use both of them in quite a neutral swatch and then i was thinking as well with the fridge the one from cottage living with the swatch that i've used it kind of ever so slightly matches the tile that i've used in here for the wallpaper which the wallpaper tile i believe is from parenthood of memory but in this kitchen like all of the other kitchens in all the other houses it's quite small it's quite snug and so i decided to opt for some shelves on the wall rather than kitchen cabinets i just felt like if i would have done kitchen cabinets it just would have enclosed the room so much and i felt like it would have been a little bit like claustrophobic in there and so i yeah i decided to opt for some wall shelves instead i used a mixture of two different ones the one over here by the oven hood space that one is from the for rent ep it comes pre-cluttered which 
I actually really like. Sometimes I prefer when the Sims team would not clutter up surfaces, not clutter up like certain units and stuff. But in this case, I really liked it because I needed to size it down ever so slightly just so it fit nice and comfortably in between the oven hood and then the end of the wall. So I sized it down and then I moved objects and clutter pieces onto the shelf itself just to make it seem a little bit more personalized to this household and so i placed down a little spice rack the one that i use is from the home chef hustle stuff pack and then i also placed down some plates which again i think is from the home chef hustle stuff pack tell you what we've actually got a number of different odd plates and bowls now that we can use for cluttering up our kitchens but one thing that i really wish that we get more of is some more like glasses or some more like drink holding things because we've got a mixture of different cups that we got from the everyday clutter kit and there is an individual mug and then there is a cluster of three but i feel like i just want some like plain glasses that you have like your water or you know just juice or something in because off memory that is the only kind of glassware or any kind of plate cutlery kind of stuff that we don't have yet in the game oh and actually i would love if we could get some sort of like knife and fork holder because I don't think we've got one of them either. We've got one of them attached to like dishwashing rack things, but not as an individual unit. But either way, I placed them onto that little shelf in the kitchen. And then I also placed down a little kettle as well. But now, as you can see, I've now moved on to the upstairs portion of this build. Quickly just did one of the bathrooms. The second bathroom is downstairs, but it's only a half bath. So it's only got a toilet and a sink in. The upstairs bathroom, it looks very snug. It looks like it shouldn't be functional. It looks like it shouldn't be usable, but I promise you I've played as this house and it is completely usable. Currently, as you can see, I'm just coming in and furnishing the first bedroom, which is the kids' room. So in here, I decided to use the bed that we got from the Parenthood game pack. And I'm pretty sure in a second, you're gonna see me try and change my mind and try and switch out to be a different single bed but i end up just using the same bed again one wish that i've really got for the sims 4 in terms of the build and buy catalog is if we could get an update some point in time where they update it so we have single beds in a single category away from like the double beds because now in the sims 4 we've got so many different beds which don't get me wrong i love it because i remember there was a point in time where we had like next to no beds and especially double beds like we was really we had like next to nothing but now i feel like every single new dlc that we get we do get a new bed which i love and i appreciate but when it comes around to actually filtering through all the different bed options whether it be a single bed a double bed bunk bed toddler bed you know all the different bedding options i just feel like there's got so many now and so i really wish that at one point in time we would get an update where they would give us a single bed category and then a double bed category because I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I just find it so hard looking at all the different beds that we've now got in the catalogue. But either way, in here, I decided to place down a little side table at the end of the bed. Initially, I was going to block off that little cube that I placed down that side table in. But then when I actually came in and I started decorating, I thought it would be the perfect place to have a little side table and then I'd pop a little TV onto it. And so that is what I did. I then also placed down some shelving units above the TV and then just went to town with cluttering them with like loads of different gaming controllers and little statues and just like little knick knacks like that and then also in this room there ends up being a little science table the one that i've used is from the snow escape expansion pack and then it also ends up being a toy box a blurfy is that his name you know the teddy bear <laughs> the base game one i ended up placing down one of them and then also a tiny living chest of drawers now when i was playtesting this bedroom in particular my sim that was a kid couldn't either change their clothes and they also couldn't go into the toy box and so at the minute there was sort of like a little gap in between the bedside table and then the toy box because I placed down some sort of like storybook cluster in between it but I end up moving over the toy box so it kind of sits parallel to the bedside table and then just deleted that little storybook thing and then that way my sim was able to change their clothes and then also gain access to the toy box but either way moving on as you can see i have now moved over into the next room in this house which is the last room but it is the parents bedroom so in here i decided to use the bed that we got from the dream home decorator game pack but i decided to pair it with these bedside tables that are from seasons now the reason why i did this is because even though we do technically have bedside tables that are meant to go along with this double bed I've, I've never thought they've actually matched. Like if you actually look at the bedside tables that we got from the Dream Home Decorator game pack in like this brownie woody kind of swatch, to me, 
it just they don't even look like they're meant to be the same color i don't know what it is and so whenever i use this bed i never use the proper technical matching bedside tables because to me in my eyes <laughs> they just don't match and so yeah i decided to use the ones that we've got from seasons and also the ones from seasons are quite small and they're quite ideal especially when you're doing smaller bedrooms like this one but in here i decided to use a get together walk-in wardrobe in kind of like the little built-in unit in the back portion of this bedroom also placed down at some more bookcases the ones from the book nook kit and then i placed down like a taller one and then kind of like a shorter one but i was making it so the shorter one seems to be some sort of like surface where your sims can like cluster it up and place down loads of little different like bits and bobs and so yeah that is what i did and then i also ended up placing down a mirror in that room and as well when i came around to play testing i realized i didn't place down a washing basket or like laundry basket in the first house and so i was able to fit one in that bedroom but either way moving on as you can see i've now moved over into the middle house which is the house that i designed to be for a sim that is in their like mid to late 40s who lives alone and is a bit of a collector so in here like i mentioned when i was kind of introducing all the different houses and the brief storylines for the sims the sim that I imagined to live in this house previously used to live here with his mum, but his mum passed away. But in terms of the interior decoration and kind of like the overall style of this house, I really wanted to make it feel like th this sim, this bloke, has never decorated his house. He's just gone with whatever his mum's had for the past, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years. And he's just kind of added loads of different stuff, kind of a load of different junk on top of the already decorations in this house. And so it is a little bit more older fashioned. It is a little bit more dated if you want to put it that way but i really liked it and to me i found this house to be the most fun to decorate just because i loved the idea for this sim who lives alone is a bit of an introvert i feel like the three houses he's known as like the grumpy the grumpy one you know like the new family probably moved in and the family on the end that live in the greenhouse that i just decorated probably gave him a little bit of a warning like you know beware he's a bit grumpy he's a bit grouchy but once you get to know him he's probably all right but yeah that was the kind of idea that i had for this sim now in terms of his career i was personally thinking he just had like a regular day job in like a supermarket or something i don't imagine him to be in any sort of like profession like he's not a doctor he's not he's not a policeman he's just got an everyday kind of job he works in probably the local supermarket or like the local walmart or something and yeah he was just able to live in his house because it got passed down to him in his mum's will so in here i kind of started off again by the front entrance hallway kind of figured out what kind of side table i wanted to use what kind of decorations i ended up using a clock on the wall which is kind of half clock half painting but we got it from the strangeville game pack and that one just looks a little bit more dated it looks like it's a little bit older and it was just overall perfect for this house but then you would have seen i moved on into the kitchen use some of my favorite counters in the game the base game more traditional looking ones and then i placed down an almost like older looking fridge i was thinking it was probably the same fridge that he had when he was growing up but his mum never replaced it and he's probably never going to replace it either because i mean it works what's the point in splurging a load of money on a fridge if there's no problem with the with the current one and so yeah i placed that down into there i then placed down a load of different clutter loads of different like little bits and bobs onto the kitchen surfaces and then just off the kitchen the way that you actually get into that room is you have to go through the dining room again with the dining room in particular it looks very snug it looks like it wouldn't be usable but again i promise you i play tested it. it it works but in the dining room i placed down a single kind of like rounded table and then i placed down three chairs that we got from the cats and dogs expansion pack around it and then i placed down a little like vase of flowers on top of the the tabletop itself and then i placed down a little salt and pepper and then also some sort of like older looking plates the ones that i've used are from the horse ranch expansion pack and then i placed down like some sort of like corner wall decoration that we got from base game and that was pretty much it for that room i didn't want to add too much because it was small enough and i didn't want to make it so it wasn't usable but now as you can see i've now moved over into the lounge room now the lounge room i feel like is the the room that really shows that this sim who lives in this house is a big clutter person they love clutter they love collecting loads of different random bits and bobs loads of just different stuff and so basically what i wanted to do is i wanted to find some sort of shelf and unit in the game that could pretty much house all the different clutter that i knew that i wanted to place down but the thing is i was running into the problem of 
there really wasn't any sort of unit that did what I wanted it to do and so I pretty much just decided to make my own. Now I used two shelving units that we got from I believe it was the high school years expansion pack. They're the ones on more so like the left hand side of it. But then I also use another shelving unit which comes pre-cluttered with some little like bowls and vases and then some sort of succulent. That one is from I believe the Eco Lifestyle expansion pack. And to my luck, the woods of both the shelving unit from high school years and the one from Eco Lifestyle just happened to match perfectly. And so what I did, I moved all three shelving units really close together. So in some areas they were kind of like overlapping. I don't want to say glitching because that will probably scare you, but they, they were kind of like glitching over each other. But I knew it was going to be all right because basically once I'd moved them all really closely together, I then went into the shelving category and found like a plain base game shelf that had a similar ish swatch of the shelving units itself the one that i've used i've just basically sized that massive but i basically used this base game shelf and popped it on top of all three of the units so then that way the top portion is completely seamless there's no like visual glitch i then got the same shelving unit and then rotated it 90 degrees so then that way it kind of blended in and it seemed like it was you know, it all looked like it meshed together really nicely, basically. And then on the unit on the right hand side, you know, the one that's got a little succulent in, well, on the bottom portion of it, there seems to be some sort of like a little gap. And I didn't want that to happen because the shelving units that we got from the high school years expansion pack, they pretty much go all the way down to the floor. And it just looked a little bit odd to me to have the two units on the left hand side be all the way down to the floor and the one on the right hand side to have a little bit of a gap. So all I did to fix that was I got the same shelving unit from high school years, sized it down really small and then kind of merged and pushed it in to the one that we got from Eco Lifestyle. And then once that was done, I pretty much had some sort of like a shelving unit that I could just basically go free reign and just clutter up to as much as what I wanted it to be. So I basically went in to the debug menu, found all different sorts of structures, all different sorts of like wood carving models and loads of just random bits and bobs like some of them I don't even know where you accumulate them in the game like there is some sort of like metally kind of like iron maybe like even steel looking sculptures that we've got in the debug menu there is one of some sort of like faces there is one of a man holding a brolly there is also one of like a clown they're in the debug menu from base game. I ain't got a clue where you find them because I've never encountered them before in, in any of my gameplay experience before. And I've been playing The Sims 4 since it came out, but either way, they're in the debug menu. There was some sort of sculpture. I thought it looked cool. And so I plopped them down onto the shelving unit alongside loads of different Sims trophies and like werewolf like little sculptures and just loads of just different random bits and bobs. I truly tried not to leave any empty space on them shelving units because I'm thinking, the bloke that lives in this house just loves collecting loads of different bits and bobs. He, he probably goes out with like a little metal detector or something at the weekends. So that's why maybe what one of his hobbies that he likes to do. He is a bit of an introvert. I feel like he's probably going out in like Oasis Springs or something with his headphones on, going out into the desert and just uncovering all these just random bits and bobs. And he takes them home, cleans them up and then just pops them onto his little shelving unit. But... Also in the lounge room, I placed down a retro TV. The one that I use is from the basement treasures kit. And then I also placed down a base game love seat. And then a armchair that we got from, I believe it was the werewolves game pack off memory. And then I moved objects, some sort of like can of soda or something into one of the little like cup holder things in the armchair itself. But Either way, moving on, as you can see, I've now moved down into the basement and I'm currently coming in and furnishing the home office. Now, I was thinking when this man who lives in this house was probably growing up, this was probably his bedroom, like this was probably his childhood room. And then up until when his mum passed away, he probably used to sleep in this room. But then when his mum passed, there was kind of like a... A bedroom upstairs which you might as well have used and so he decided to turn this into basically like his little den in here i placed down a computer desk the one that i've used is from a sims 4 base game i placed down some sort of like fancy ish looking computer it looks like it's quite high spec and so i placed that down onto the computer desk i then also placed down a bookcase next to it i placed down some old mirrors that look like they've they've had their day they need to go in the bin but he hasn't let go of them there is also like random boxes and trophies and i placed down some pipes onto the walls i was trying to make this room feel a little bit more 
grungy is the best word that I can think of right now. I wanted it to not be perfect, basically. I wanted there to be scuffs on the walls. I wanted there to be imperfections here and there. And the wallpaper that I used for the home office in particular is from the basement treasure kit. And if you looked really closely, there seems to be some sort of like discoloration in the wallpaper from over time having the light on and where furniture has been like pushed up against it it seems to have like discolored or something and so yeah the, the wallpaper also has some sort of like realistic touches to it but i just wanted it to feel like a proper lived in home office that just hasn't had a coat of paint or just changed its wallpaper in probably about four decades and so yeah that was that first initial basement room and then it leads off into the utility room in the utility room i just placed down like a little washing machine a little tumble dryer i then placed down some like washing baskets on top of the tumble dryer as well to make it look like fresh clothes that are yet to be ironed they've been washed but they're in the little ironing basket but then over here as you can see i've moved over into the technical garage space now in here on the exterior this is where that sunken drive kind of like leads down into you can't access this room from the outside like if you was to be where the car is you can't like walk in through the garage door the way that you get down into the basement is from the staircase from the upper level but I mean, I like the floor plan for it. Of course, if you wanted to, you could definitely make it so you would maybe delete a little bit of the sunken drive and so make it so your Sims can access the basement from the outside, like instead of going in through the house, but it might be a little bit fiddly. And so, yeah, I was quite happy with the way it turned out. But of course, if you want to, you could definitely change the garage room or the home office and maybe make it so this house ends up having two bedrooms or maybe even three bedrooms. You can definitely like alter it and change it depending on how you want to play. But I just really liked the idea of the home office that used to be this Sims old childhood bedroom and then the garage was probably always just the garage, but it's just kind of evolved with all the different decorations and all the different activities over time. But Either way, as you can see, I've now moved on to the upstairs portion of this house and I've started off by furnishing at the bedroom. One thing I will say about this house in particular, the upstairs landing is so small, it actually couldn't get any smaller. Like you walk up the staircase to go up to the upper level and you've literally got one tile and then you're met with a door and then you go walking through the door and you've got the bedroom and then to access the upstairs bathroom, you have to go through the bedroom, which is not exactly ideal if you're playing with like a massive family or something, but I feel like for a single sim or like a one sim household, or even if you've just got like a couple living here or something, it's not the worst thing in the world because you don't really need that much more space but in the bedroom for this house i decided to use a base game bed which is in a more like traditional looking style i was thinking that maybe it was the mum's bed frame and the bedding was also you know like his mum's past bedding but then he's probably updated the mattress and that is why there is a mattress downstairs in the garage but then in the bathroom which you just saw me furnish i placed down the shower and bath combo that we got from the sims 4 base game i then placed down like a base game toilet and then actually base game counters and a base game sink the only thing that i don't think is from base game is like the wallpaper and maybe a few different decorations like scattered about but the, the bathroom was very short and sweet very simple but i mean it's got everything that you need it's got a toilet it's got a sink and it's also got a shower and bath combo but either way moving on as you can see i have now moved over to the next house which is the last house of the three and this is the house on the right hand side which is the gray sliding and the brick on the bottom so like i said initially coming into this build i had the idea to partly furnish this house the extent of your sims will be able to move into this house and they've got all their basic needs covered in sense of they've got an oven they've got a fridge they've got a sink a toilet and then a shower but then in terms of like the interior furnishings like sofas and decorations and beds and bedside tables and stuff like that i wasn't going to include because i was thinking it might be quite fun to make it move in ready but then when i was decorating the other houses on this lot i just really liked the idea of well, what about if i do decorate it but i just decorate it for you know a couple that have just got their first mortgage they've got a new baby they've just moved in they haven't got too much stuff but it's still decorated and then also that way if you did want to download this build and you wanted your sims to live in any of the particular houses for this house where there's not too much clutter there's not too much stuff i feel like it would probably be the easiest to renovate and so yeah i decided to make it lived in but not overly cluttered if, if you get my dress but anyway starting off with the front entrance hallway i placed down a little side table and then i placed down some cards onto the side table which i was thinking could mean two different things the first one being it could be like congratulations on your new home or like you finally did it or something you know like when you get cards of people if they've just moved into their first place i was thinking they could be cards for that 
Or I was also thinking, the couple that live in this house, they've got a newborn baby. Well, they've got an infant, but to me, object babies don't really exist. As soon as my sim has a baby, I just ate them straight up into an infant. But I was thinking maybe they're cards for like, congratulations on like your new addition to the family or something. And so I place that down onto the little front side table by the front door. And then as you can see, I've now moved on into the kitchen, but outside the kitchen, there's some sort of like a little, almost like a cube, or like hallway upstairs space that leads, I say upstairs space, it leads to the upstairs, but it's where the staircase is. And I placed down a little side table, but then on the wall, I placed down like a little marking next to one of the paintings. There is one hanged up, and then I also placed down one on the floor and kind of like moved objects and angled it to look like there is a marker on the wall, or like there's a, there's a nail in the wall, and the painting that I placed down, kind of leaning on the side table, is yet to be hung up. But then you move on into the kitchen, the kitchen in this house was probably my favourite kitchen out of all of them, just because I really like the colour combination of both the wallpaper, the kitchen counters, and then also the floor tiles. So if you're curious, the wallpaper that I use in the kitchen is from the Home Chef Hustle Stuff Pack, but I decided to pair it with the flooring that we got from city living and then i use some base game counters but they're the base game industrial looking ones that recently i say recently it probably wasn't that recent but to me it feels like it was recently but we not too long ago got an update to them kitchen counters that gave us some new swatches of them and i just really like the pairing of all three of them things going together and so i think in some of my future kitchens i might use that wallpaper kitchen counter and floor tile combination because I don't know, I just really liked it in that kitchen, but as you would have seen, the kitchen ended up being probably the most cluttered room in the house, and that is just because, going back to, I feel like when you move into a new space, you're probably gonna place down all your kitcheny bits and bobs, first of all, rather than placing down all your different sculptures and all your different, like, knickknacks and stuff onto all the different surfaces. And so in the kitchen, I ended up placing down, like, a little kettle in the corner. I placed down a collection of different mugs and, like, little tins, which I imagine would be, like, tea and coffee and stuff. But now, as you can see, I've moved over into the lounge room, which also kind of doubles up to be the dining room. So in here, I decided to use a three-seater sofa that we got from the book nook kit. And then I also decided to pair it with the rug that we got from Laundry Day, or one of the rugs. We've got a couple of different rugs from the laundry day stuff book but i used one that we got from laundry day and then on the wall i used a bookcase that we got from cats and dogs and then i use a little shelving unit which is from i believe the sims 4 growing together and then on top of it i tried to clutter it up but tried to do minimal clutter which was actually quite hard for me i'm not gonna lie like, i i really struggled when it came around to decorating this house not to go over the top and just not to place down every single clutter item known to man because i normally really like to clutter up my sims houses and just try and add so many different details and so many little different bits and bobs but on the side table that is from growing together i placed down like a little open box which i was thinking maybe has some knickknacks and some little sculptures and stuff which was yet to be placed down on the bookcase which is next to it but then also in that room i ended up placing down a dining room table the one that i've used is from I believe the Snowy Escape expansion pack is a one tile one and I use the matching chairs off memory. But one thing that I have really come to realise recently, we really don't have that many dining room tables that are one tile wide. Saying that, actually, we don't really have that many dining room tables in The Sims 4. I mean, I feel like whenever you look at the category, it looks like we've got a ton of different options for your Sims dining rooms, but I don't know, I feel like I'm always limited to the same handful. Maybe it's a me problem. Maybe it is just a me problem, but we definitely do not have enough one tile single tables in the game because the ones that we do have are like from base game, they're like century year old. Like they're just, they're not doing it for me anymore. And so I really wish we'd get some more single one tile tables, but either way, besides the point, moving on. As you can see, I've now moved on to the upstairs portion of this house. Quickly just did at the bathroom. I used a shower and bath combo that we got from the Growing Together expansion pack, and then I also used a parenthood sink and then tried to clutter that up and then also placed down a little toilet next to it. Currently, I'm just going around and actually finishing off the infant's room of this house. So in here, I decided to use the crib, which I think off memory is from base game, but then the changing table suspiciously matches it, but it's from the Growing Together expansion pack, but I use that combination in here and then also use a little sheep rug on the floor, which is from the horse front expansion pack. But now, as you can see, I've now moved on into the last room in not only the house, but also in this whole entire lot, which is the final parents' bedroom. 
So in here, I decided to use the bed that we got from the Growing Together expansion pack in a swatch, which I don't think I've used before, but I thought it was really lovely, and so I decided to use it. But in here, I ended up placing down a Get Together wardrobe, a mirror on the wall, and then I tried to fit in a crib, but I couldn't manage to make it work, and so I decided just to replace it with a plant. But other than that, I'm gonna go around the room, finish it off, and that is pretty much it. So anyway guys, I'm going to end this voiceover right here. As always, you can download this build via the gallery. My gallery ID is JessicaPyYT, or if you search for the hashtag JessicaPyYT or just the hashtag JessicaPy. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, if you do like my content, then please do subscribe. And hopefully I will see you in my next Sims 4 speedboarding video. Bye guys.